Hi, everybody. I can't believe it's Wednesday, but here we are, another midweek moment, and I appreciate you joining me online tonight. Uh, please share tonight's study, if you will. If you're looking on Facebook or you're with us on YouTube, make sure that you hit share, and let's uh, get as many people involved and hear the message tonight. We're going to be looking at the subject of perseverance. Uh, we've been talking about character qualities, and I certainly think that perseverance is a character quality that all of us need to develop in our life. And if you have your Bible or your device tonight, we're going to be looking at James chapter 1, verse number 12. Remember last week we looked at some verses in James. We're going to get back to James tonight. James chapter 1, verse number 12. Here's what James said. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, once he endures or perseveres or gets on the other side of this trial, he will receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Perseverance is so important. If you look that little word up in the dictionary, here's what it says. A continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, opposition, or even failure. We need perseverance because without perseverance in our life, it is so easy for us to just throw the towel in. It's easy for us to, to run the flag up. Easy for us to just roll over and give up. In fact, it's human nature to do that. Not, nobody likes opposition. Nobody likes difficulty. We, we, you know, we all want life to go easy, but that's, that's not reality. And when life gets difficult, we have to dig in and we have to persevere. In fact, tonight I want to talk not only about perseverance, but I want to talk about perseverance and faith. How our faith in God and perseverance really work together. If you're a person of faith, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, your faith is going to be tested. James tells us that. And there are other scriptures that tell us that. So our faith is going to be tested. Uh, it's going to be challenged. There's times that our faith will be opposed. Uh, there's times that uh, our faith is going to be criticized and even mocked. And I would say maybe all the more today in the culture in which we live because uh, Christianity is really not that popular today. And so sometimes you just got to put on your big boy pants. Sometimes you got to put on your big girl pants and you just have to stand up for the Lord and you have to persevere. Now, in the scripture, there's a lot of different excellent examples of perseverance. And I want to look at uh, four of those tonight. And, and, and these four individuals, with the exception of Jesus, were just ordinary individuals that God called on, and they ended up doing extraordinary things. So let's look at the examples tonight. First is Jeremiah the prophet. Man, this guy had to persevere big time. If you know anything about Jeremiah the prophet, God called him to share a message with Israel, to share a message that Israel needed to hear, uh, some changes that Israel needed to make in their relationship with God. And when the people heard it, they didn't like it. In fact, they called him a liar. They accused him of treason. They arrested him. They beat him. At one time, he was thrown into a mud-filled well to die. Jeremiah had to persevere. But through all of those things, he didn't give up. He didn't turn his back on God. He continued to be faithful in his belief and what God called him to do. Another example is Job. I don't think there's any human being that endured more hell on earth than Job did. You know that Job was a man of great integrity, and yet Job experienced sickness. He came under a tremendous attack. We know that he broke out in boils all over his body. We know that he suffered greatly. You know that he lost everything, all of his cattle, everything that he owned. And then he was criticized and rejected by his friends and his family. In fact, it was his wife that said, why don't you just curse God and die? But what did Job say? He said, even if God slays me, I'll never, ever turn my back on him. You know why? It's because he persevered in his faith. If you jump to the New Testament, you've got the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul at one time persecuted followers of Christ. He persecuted Christians. But when he had a dramatic encounter with Jesus and his life was transformed, 
You know what happened? He became a follower of Jesus Christ. And when he became a follower of Christ, here's what happened. He was rejected and questioned by the church in Jerusalem. Peter, James, John, they all thought he was a phony. They said, you can't trust this guy. Paul went on to serve God, and he went through so many difficulties. He was on a ship that was hit by a storm. He was shipwrecked. He was arrested. Uh, he was beaten. Uh, they tried to stone him to death, and yet Paul continued to persevere in his faith. And then you take Jesus. He personified perseverance. When you think about Jesus, he endured criticism. He endured rejection. Uh, he was arrested for a crime that he never committed. And eventually he had to endure a brutal, humiliating crucifixion on a cross. All of these individuals that I mentioned love the Lord. All of these individuals that I mentioned serve the Lord. And yet they went through extreme difficulty in their life. Just because we have faith in God doesn't mean that we're not going to have problems. Just because we have faith in God doesn't mean that everybody's going to embrace us and think we're the best thing since sliced bread. That's just not the way it works. So I want us to look at some of the characteristics of people who persevere in their faith. And we see it in the four examples that I just mentioned. Uh, we see it in other examples in Scripture. And, and, and I think we see it even today in people's lives that go through so much and yet they hang on to their faith, they're faithful in their faith, and they persevere in their faith. So here's some characteristics. Number one, they're willing to stand alone. People who persevere in faith are willing to stand alone. Because perseverance is never about being in the majority. Now, I will admit it's nice when everybody agrees with me. It's nice when everybody agrees with you. It's nice when everybody pats us on the back and everybody's standing in the corner with us. But that rarely happens in life. And there are times in our life when we're going to have to stand up for what we believe the Scripture teaches. We're going to have to stand up and not be ashamed of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we have to persevere. And we're going to have to persevere in our convictions. Uh, it's never about being in the majority. But here's what we need to remember. Even though we think we're standing alone, when you're standing with God, you're never standing alone. The second characteristic is they took life one day at a time. I think one of the keys to persevering is understanding that life is a process, that that as life unfolds and the process unfolds and the journey uh, carries out in our life, that we're going to go through seasons in our life. In fact, Solomon talks about seasons. He says there's a time uh, for everything, a time and a season for everything. Uh, there's a time for joy and a time for sadness. There's a time for peace and a time for war. And so people that persevere in their faith, the examples that we shared a moment ago, uh, these are people that choose to, to, to look at life one day at a time. And they understand there's going to be ups and downs. I understand there's going to be valleys and there's going to be mountains. But they embrace the process of life in the good times and even in the bad times. There's a third characteristic. They choose to keep moving forward. Think about that. They choose to keep moving moving forward. Jeremiah kept moving forward. Job kept moving forward. Paul, with all the opposition, kept moving forward. And certainly Jesus continued to move forward. In fact, the Apostle Paul said it this way in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 14. He said, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I continue to press on. I continue to run the race. When we persevere, we understand that we have to keep moving. We can't get stuck on yesterday. We can't get stuck on today or the problems of today. We have to realize that tomorrow's another day. That even though uh, we're weeping today, joy can come in the morning. 
uh, even though we're experiencing difficulty and challenges today, that the sun is going to rise and new opportunities are going to rise with that tomorrow. So if you're going to persevere, you have to keep moving on. The fourth characteristic is this. They always depended on God for strength. People who persevere depend on the Lord for their strength. In other words, Jeremiah, Job, Paul, Jesus, they understood that God was with them, His presence was there, His grace was available, and that He would give them strength that they didn't have in the face of opposition, difficulty, trial, sorrow, suffering, whatever it may be. You know, it was a little boy, and he was out in the backyard with his dad. His dad was doing some, some chores. And the little boy had his shovel, and he was digging in the sand pit. And as he was digging down, he hit something, and it was a rock. So he began to clear the sand out from around the rock, and he decided he wanted to remove the rock from his sand pit. He didn't want that rock to be a part of his life. And so he put his little fingers around that rock, and he started pulling and pulling, but he couldn't move the rock. So he got a little more determined. He dug more around, and he tried to pull and pull, but it was too heavy for him to move. So he started crying. And his dad said, what's wrong? He said, Daddy, this rock is in the sand pit, and I don't want this rock in there. And I've done everything I can to move the rock, and I'm just not strong enough, Daddy. And his dad said, well, you haven't tried everything. He said, Daddy, I have tried everything. He said, son, you haven't asked me. I'm your dad, and I'm strong enough to move that rock. That's the way it is with God. There are things that we can't face, things that we can't deal with, uh, challenges that we can't handle by ourselves. But God, our Father, is always there to give us the strength to deal with it, to move it, to get beyond it. That's why Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things, all things. I can face all things through Christ who gives me strength. Some of the greatest breakthroughs, some of the greatest miracles occur when we persevere in the most difficult times of our life and we experience His grace and His strength when we just are willing to keep on keeping on. You know, I'm a, I'm a football fan, and uh, my team is the Chicago Bears. And, uh, yeah, I agree, they, uh, they haven't won much lately. But my favorite football player of all time is Walter Payton. Walter Payton was a running back for the Chicago Bears. He wore number 34. His nickname was Sweetness. And he was a phenomenal football player. A, a tough football player. He wasn't a big guy. I think Walter Payton was maybe a couple inches taller than me, certainly weighed more than me, much stronger than me, and willing to persevere much more than I would be willing to persevere. Walter Payton uh, played 13 seasons in the National Football League, and he rushed for 16,726 yards. I believe when he retired from football, he was at the top of the rushing list. He's been passed since then. But when he retired, he was the number one rusher in the history of football. Eventually, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now, think about how many times Walter Payton got knocked down. In fact, when, when we were in college, we had the opportunity to see Walter Payton uh, play a couple of different times in Tampa. And what a thrill it was for me to watch my football hero play football. And man, guys would knock him down, chase him down, and Walter every time would bounce back up. In fact, at times when they knocked him down, he would just roll back like this and push off with his hands and spring up on his feet. You know what he was saying? You can knock me down as many times as you want, but I'm going to get back up. I'm going to continue to persevere. I'm going to continue to run this football, and eventually I'm going to get it into the end zone. Again, after that kind of dedication, perseverance, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So I would say to us today, we need to toughen up. We need to be willing to stand up for our faith. It's not always going to be popular. It's not always going to be easy. But you know what? Jesus stood up for us. We need to stand up 
for him. We need to keep running the race that he has put before us. Let me close with this again in James chapter 5, this time, verse number 11. And I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. James chapter 5, verse number 11. Here's what it said. What a gift life is to those who stay the course. You've heard, of course, of Job's staying power. And you know how God brought it all together for him in the end. That's because God cares. Cares right down to the last detail. You may be going through a trial. You may be going through a difficult time. You may feel like your world is falling apart. And maybe the temptation is, is to just turn your back on your faith. To just say, well, this doesn't work and praying doesn't work and I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. Don't do that. Because you know what? Job hung in there and God returned it all to him. Seven times over, he blessed him. God will bless you if you persevere in your faith. My friend, don't give up. Don't, don't throw in the towel. God's got your back and God will get you through. So, Father, I thank you tonight for every one of my friends who are listening and watching. And I pray for them, and I pray for myself tonight. We need perseverance in our life, particularly as it relates to our faith. We need to persevere as Christian men and women. We need to persevere as mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. We need to persevere in every area of our life. And when we do, you will bring about blessing. You will bring about resources. You will provide for your people. So help us to keep on keeping on and to keep running our race with confidence and perseverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for being with me tonight. And I'll look forward to connecting with you next time.